friends, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to make a little crocheted book to hold all of my hooks in. I've made a little bit of a rough copy here, and I'm gonna use this to explain what we're going to be crocheting today in order to make our little crochet hook holder. So I've decided for this one, I want to do the waffle stitch. I like the waffle stitch because it's got texture on the front side, but on the back, it's all flat. So I think that if the outside of the book has texture and the inside is flat, that will be an ideal surface for our crochet project. I was mathing out how many stitches we're going to need. And for a six inch across, it looks like we'll need 30 stitches. And then we're gonna double that. So we'll have 60 stitches. Then we'll add three for the initial chain. So that's 63 stitches. And then I think we'll add three more just for like the spine of the book. So that'll bring us to 66 chain stitches, I hope. Let's talk about what you're gonna need. First things first, you're gonna need a crochet hook. I am using a 3.5 millimeter hook today. Next, you're going to need some yarn. I'm using this number three. This is a mercerized cotton and uh, I'm gonna use this pretty ballerina pink. You'll also need some scissors and a yarn needle. We're also going to be using some stitch markers today. So gather your supplies and let's jump in. We're gonna start with the back rectangle. So an eight inch by 12 inch rectangle. I'm gonna be doing this rectangle in the waffle stitch. If you don't wanna do it in the waffle stitch, you can do whatever you you'd like, just make sure your measurements are eight inches by 12 inches. If you wanna do the waffle stitch with me, we're gonna start with a slip knot. From here, chain 66 stitches. One, two, three, 65, and 66. And there we go. Now we've got 66 chains. From here, we're going to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, and four and then double crochet across the first chain. Here I am at the end of that first row. I'm ending with 63 stitches in the row. You can see right there. Nice long row, should be just about 12 inches. Perfect. From here, we're gonna jump right into the waffle stitch. First, chain two to bring ourselves up to row number two and then turn the work around. So we're gonna start row number two with a front post double crochet. That begins with a yarn over, insert the hook behind the entire post of the previous double crochet stitch, yarn over again and pull up a loop. Now there's three loops on the hook, yarn over pulling through two loops on the hook. Now there's two loops left, yarn over again and pull through the remaining two loops. That's a front post double crochet. Next, we're going to double crochet normally into the next three stitches. There's one, two, and three. Next, we're going to front post double crochet. In the next three stitches, just a regular double crochet. One, two, and three. And then in the following stitch, a front post double crochet. We're gonna do this repeat all the way across row number two. So three double crochets and then a front post double crochet. Three double crochets and then a front post double crochet. I'm gonna zoom through this part because it's just the same stitches and I will see you at the end of row number two. If you're new to crochet and these stitches are confusing to you, I'll create a link up in the corner now and you can click for the front post double crochet tutorial. It's a little bit more detailed and slow so that you can pick up that stitch perfectly before you come back here and make this project. I'll also link all of the relevant tutorials in the description box down below. Here I am coming up to the end of row number two. I've just done my last three double crochets. Now I'm going to do my last front post double crochet. And now there's two stitches left here. I've got my last double crochet and then the chain two from, uh, from our first row. So I'm going to do my last double crochet and then in the chain space, I'm gonna do one more double crochet just like this. And then we'll chain two and turn. Now for row number three, we're going to actually begin with just a regular double crochet into the space that we did that final double crochet. So just through that last double crochet, we're gonna put one regular double crochet. That's gonna be our edge stitch. Now into the next stitch, we're gonna do a front post double crochet. In the next stitch, 
which was a front post double crochet. You can see it's kind of pulled back. We're gonna do a regular double crochet stitch into that stitch. Now in the next three stitches here, we're going to do front post double crochets. For this row, we're doing the reverse of what we did for the last row. So in the previous row, we did front post double crochet followed by three regular double crochets. Now we're gonna do three front post double crochets followed by one regular double crochet. So there's my regular double crochet. And now we're gonna do three more front post double crochets followed by one regular double crochet. And we're just gonna repeat this all the way across. At the end of this row, chain two and turn. But I'll meet you at the end of the row. And here I am coming up to the end of row number three, I'm just putting in my last three front post double crochets, and then I'll do my last regular double crochet, and then we've made it to the end of the row, so I'm gonna put one additional double crochet into the last chain space of the row, and then chain two and turn. So you can already begin to see that waffle pattern emerging. We've got the front post double crochets which bring the ridge of the stitch up, and then the front posts, when we do it on the reverse side, creates this ridge across. Now, for row number four, it's gonna be the same thing we did for row number two. So we're going to start with a front post double crochet in the first stitch, followed by three regular double crochets. Then we'll do another front post double crochet, followed by three more regular double crochets and we're going to repeat this pattern all the way across for row number four. At the end of row number four, chain two and turn. Here I am coming up to the end of row number four. I'm just putting my last front post double crochet and then my last double crochets in here. And now I'm at the last stitch of the row, so I'm going to put my double crochet into that chain space and then chain two and turn. The waffle pattern is really starting to show up now. Now for row number five, we're gonna do the same thing we did for row number three. So we're gonna start the row with a front post double crochet, and then we're going to do a regular double crochet into the next stitch. And then in the next three stitches, we'll do three front post double crochets, followed by a regular double crochet in the next stitch. So row number five is exactly the same as what we did for row number three. I'm just gonna zoom across row number five and I'll see you when I get there. And here I am coming up to the end of row number five, just putting my last front post double crochets in, and then my last regular double crochet, and then my corner stitch double crochet in the chain two from the previous row. And then I'll chain two and turn. And now that waffle pattern is really starting to take shape. Now from rows number six all the way up to row number 29, we're gonna re be repeating the exact same pattern. For all of the even rows, we're going to be doing a front post double crochet followed by three regular double crochets, then a front post double crochet, then three regular double crochets. For all of the odd rows, we're going to do a regular double crochet followed by three front post double crochets, and then a regular double crochet followed by three front post double crochets. We're gonna do that back and forth, back and forth, the exact same repeat all the way up to row number 29. So I'm going to zoom through this because it's all the same stitches as we did for rows number two and three, and I will see you at the end of row number 29. All right, here I am coming up to the end of row number 29. This is looking so cute, and it's going to be a perfect size for our crochet hook holder. At this point, I am going to cut my yarn. Look at how much I have left. I played a good game of yarn chicken. I'm gonna cut my yarn, put my last stitch through, and then I'll flip this over. So this is what 29 rows looks like. At this point, we are 12 inches long and eight inches high. And that is perfect because what I want is to have it be six inches by eight inches like this will be the final size. And you can see that waffle stitch texture looks so cute. Now it's time for us to work the second rectangle. So we did this first rectangle. Now we're going to work this second rectangle. So at this point, I've basically run out of my pink. I'm gonna put this aside because we don't need this anymore. So we're gonna begin with a slip knot. From here, chain 26. One, 
2, 3, 24, 25, and 26. Now in the second chain from the hook, create a single crochet. Then single crochet across the row, one stitch in each chain stitch across. At the end of the row, chain one and turn. And here I am coming up to the end of the first row. I'm gonna put my last single crochet in and then chain one and turn. Now for row number two, we're gonna be doing a different kind of stitch. We're gonna start with the first stitch, we're going to do a single crochet, then chain one. Then we're gonna skip the second stitch and in the third stitch, we're gonna do another single crochet. After that, we're gonna chain one, skip one, and then single crochet in the next stitch. Then chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that all the way across for row number two. At the end of the row, chain one and turn. Here I am at the end of row number two. I'm gonna put my last single crochet in. And you can see at the end of this row, there is one additional stitch left. So I'm not gonna chain one after this single crochet. I'm just gonna put my last stitch so that there's two single crochets right next to each other at the end of the row. Then I'll chain one and turn. Now for row number three, I'm gonna start by putting a single crochet in the first stitch of the row, and then I'll do a chain one. Now we'll skip a stitch, which ends up being that single crochet that was before the final single crochet. So there's two single crochets next, next to each other. We're gonna skip that single crochet, and then we're gonna put our next single crochet in the chain one space from the previous row. And from here for row number three, it's gonna be the same as row number two. We'll chain one, then we'll skip that next single crochet, and then we'll put the single crochet into the chain one space from the row before. Then we'll chain one again, skip the single crochet and single crochet into the chain one space from the row before. And I'm just gonna repeat that all the way across for row number three. And at the end of the row, chain one and turn. All right, I'm at the end of row number three now. And again, there is a single crochet after my last single crochet stitch. So I just did my last single crochet stitch. I'm not gonna chain one but I am going to put another single crochet at the end of the row. And now because of that, we've got nice straight ends on each of the rows because on each side of the work, there's two single crochets to begin and end the work. It's a cute stitch, huh? Now this rectangle should be just about four inches long at this point. And we're gonna continue with the same stitch pattern until we have 12 inches of fabric. I'll let you know how many rows that ends up being for me. It might be different for you depending on your tension, but I'm going to zoom through this part because it's the exact same stitch. This is called the linen stitch. And I'm going to continue with this until I have 12 inches of fabric. All right, here I am coming up to the end of 12 inches of fabric. And for me, that is taking a total of 80 rows. So I'm on my last row here, row number 80. And that is gonna be the last row I need to get to 12 inches of fabric. I'm still gonna need to block out this rectangle because you can see it's kind of wobbly. So I'm gonna have to stretch it out. And we are just about four inches. Once I block it, it'll be four inches by 12 inches. So that's perfect. And now you can see the texture of that stitch. By doing the chain one single crochet, we create this really nice texture, which is gonna be perfect for fitting our crochet hooks into when we're putting this thing together. It's going to look like this when it's closed and then we'll open it up and there's going to be the seams for the different hooks. And we still need to create our two flaps now, two inches by six inches. So let's do that next. For this part, I'm going to switch to this baby blue yarn. We're going to begin with a slip knot, then chain 15. One, two, 14, 15. <laughs> Now in the second chain from the hook, one, two, complete a single crochet. Then single crochet across. At the end of the row, chain one and turn. Here I am at the end of row number one. I'm gonna put my last single crochet into the final stitch and then chain one and turn. We should be about a two inch wide band at this point. Now in the first stitch of the row, I'm gonna do a regular single crochet. Now in the next stitch of the row and all the way across the row up until the last stitch, I'm gonna do single crochets 
in the back loops only. So not just a regular single crochet, this time we're only gonna be picking up the back loop of the stitch and completing a single crochet with just the back loop. Here I'm at the last stitch of the row and I did a back loop single crochet for the second last stitch. But now for the last stitch of the row, I'm going to do a regular single crochet. So for the first and last stitch of the row, I'm going through both loops of the stitch. And then I'll chain one and turn the work. Now for the first stitch of row number three, I'll do a regular single crochet. Then for the rest of the row, except for the last stitch, I'm going to single crochet through the back loops only. By going through both loops on the first and last stitch, we're creating a nice straight edge to work with. By going through the back loops on the rest of the stitches, we're creating a ribbed texture. I'll show you at the end of this row. Here I am coming up to the end of row number three. I'll put my last single crochet through the back loops, and then in the last stitch of the row, I'll go through both loops, and then chain one and turn. And you can see there's this little bit of a ribbed stitch. Just creates a little bit of texture. Since this flap is going to be going over it, it'll create a nice little texture for our stitches. Now, we're going to follow this exact repeat. So a regular single crochet in the first and last stitch of the row, otherwise single crochet back loops only all the way across. We're gonna repeat that for rows number four all the way up until our piece of fabric is six inches long. I'll let you know how big that is for me, but we're gonna need two rectangles like this. So make two rectangles that are six inches long. I'll see you when I've done that and I'll let you know how many rows we get to. All right, I finished my little rectangles that are two inches by six and it took 38 rows. So these are 38 rows each and I made two of them. So I'm just gonna weave in this final end here ugh, with my slightly too big sewing needle. Then I'll trim my yarn. And now it's gonna be time for us to put this thing together. So we've got our two blue rectangles, our green rectangle and our pink rectangle. I'm gonna flip my pink rectangle so that the waffle pattern is on the bottom. So this flat side is facing up. This is gonna be the inside of our crochet hook holder. It's gonna be folded into a little book like this but this is going to be the inside. And now it's time for us to put the hook holder itself, which is going to be this green fabric, as well as the two individual flaps onto the top and bottom of the book. These are going to be stitched down at the top seam so that they sort of hold down the hooks. And this is going to be stitched down along the bottom and the sides, as well as some periodic seams in the middle to secure the hooks in like that. So I think we should start with the blue pieces. We'll start with these up at the top and I'm just gonna line them up on that top seam and I'm gonna use my stitch markers to stitch them down where I want them to be stuck to the fabric. Now I'm gonna switch to a purple yarn just to keep up with this, you know, multicolored work. I'm going to use this fuchsia purple and I am going to begin single crocheting, one single crochet in each of these single crochet rows, one single crochet in each of these double crochet stitches. So I'm gonna begin by just inserting my hook where I've put that stitch marker in the corner stitch on both pieces of fabric. Then I'm going to pull up a loop with my yarn. I'm gonna drop the tail and then I'm going to chain one with the new yarn. Now I'm gonna single crochet these two pieces of fabric together. Like I said, one single crochet in each stitch across. And I'm going to use my single crochet stitches just to cover that tail. All right, I've made it to the end of the first piece of fabric. I'm just gonna take my stitch marker out here and just connect it just to the other side. And now I'm gonna put my last single crochet stitch here into the last stitch before I hit the middle of the pink rectangle. So I've marked the middle as being along this line. And now I've got my last stitch before I hit that middle stitch. And now I'm going to be doing the same thing across with the other piece of fabric, the other blue. So I've got that, the last single crochet stitch like this, and now I'm going to go ahead and connect the second rectangle into the next double crochet stitch here, just like that. And then I'm going to continue that all the way across to the corner of the work. All right, I've made it to the last stitch of that corner. 
And now you can see we've got that first top seam all put in. That'll flap forward like that when the book is closed. Ta-da! So now we're going to stitch down the side of the work. At this point, I am also going to put the green rectangle into place where we're going to want to have it stitched so that we don't go beyond with our stitches. So I'm just going to stitch marker the corner to the corner of the green fabric and I'll also stitch marker the top of the corner of the green fabric to the middle of the pink here. So now we're going to go around the corner. That means we're going to put a second stitch in the exact same stitch. Now I'm going to single crochet together the blue fabric and the pink fabric up until this corner. Now I'm going to single crochet down these rows. I'm going to put two single crochets in each of the double crochet rows all the way down. Now I've made it to my green fabric, so I'm going to stitch mark, or I'm going to do one more single crochet rather, and then I'm going to put a single crochet into the corner of my green fabric, and then I'm going to begin single crocheting the green fabric down to the pink fabric, and I'm just going to single crochet down until I get to the corner of the work. All right, so I've made it down to the corner, and so I'm just going to put two stitches into that corner stitch just so that we're turning ourselves around the corner, and then I am going to single crochet along the bottom of the work. So I'm going to connect the green fabric to the pink fabric. Um, this time I'm just going to be doing one single crochet in each of the double crochets and one single crochet in each of the single crochets, and that should get us all the way across. All right, I've made it down to the corner. Now I'm going to turn the work and I'm going to single crochet one time in each stitch. And then since these ones are double crochets, I'm going to do two stitches per stitch all the way down. So what that means is I'm going to put one stitch in the single crochet fabric. And then when I go to the next single crochet fabric, I'll still be going into the same double crochet row. Does that make sense? All right, I've made it to the corner again. I'm going to take that stitch marker out, put my last stitch in here, and then I'm going to continue on with my single crochets. I'm going to do two single crochets in each of the double crochet rows until I make it back to the blue rectangle. Should only take a minute here. All right, I made it back to the blue fabric. So now I'm going to single crochet. Actually, I'll take that stitch marker out. Now I'm going to single crochet the blue fabric to the pink fabric all the way up until we're back where we started. All right, I've made it all the way around. It looks a little wonky right now, but that's just because it's not yet blocked. It's definitely going to uh, square up perfectly once it's blocked. But now we've got the base area for where our hooks are gonna go, and we've got the flaps at the top, which are just going to kind of keep the hooks in place. Now we're going to have to create something to tie it all together with. First though, we're going to put our seams in for our crochet hooks. I'm just gonna join the round here with a slip stitch, and then I'm gonna trim my yarn and pull a loop through, and we'll weave that in later. Now let's do those stitches. All right, so I know that the center is right here. This set of three is the center. So that one right in the middle is our center stitch. So what I want to do is I want to create a seam right on here. I think we'll do the seams in purple as well, just to keep the consistency a little bit here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a long piece and then, okay, I think I figured out how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to start on the inside here and I'm going to pick up a stitch. Let me zoom you in. So this set of three is the center of my work. So this one here is the center. So working just off to the right of the center, I'm going to pull up a loop here with my yarn tail and I'm just going to tie this down to that seam just so we're starting from a little bit of a secure place. All right, so now with that piece tied to that seam, I'm going to come up with the needle through the work in the spot where I tied the knot. And I'm going to come up through the green. I'm going to pull that all the way down. Now, okay, here's my plan. I'm going to go up and down just a basic straight stitch, but when I do that, I'm going to go through just this top stitch on the pink fabric here, 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 just up to there where the green stops. So this will be my last stitch. And I'm going to weave up and down. So the first one I'll go through like this. 
And then I'll come up through the green fabric, I think. Will I come up here or will I come up here? Here, I'm figuring it out as I go. And then I'll come up, go back down, pick up the next stitch, come back up, go back down, pick up the next stitch, come back up, go back down, next one, up, down, next one, up, down, next one. And then it'll also come up, I think, like that. There we go. Now let's see how that looks. I think it's gonna work. Okay, there we go. So that seam is together and then it should be, yes, invisible on the other side. That's what I want. So I'm gonna do that. And now this part is not a tutorial because I am figuring it out. So I'm just doing the reverse, but I'm not going through the pink fabric this time. I'm only going through the green, but I think this should make me have a nice opaque line rather than a jotted line. All right, okay, not bad, not bad, okay. So I'm gonna do this. I've done the center now, or close to the center. I'm going to come up now at the, the next one, maybe the next, you know what? I'm gonna do the other side of the spine because this is the middle. So I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna go back down through the green, just through the green. Then I will come up through the green on the other side of the center. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. All right, that looks cool. Invisible on the front, only seen on the side we want it on. So I think I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll do that for every single one of these on this side and then I'll leave this side open so this can be for like scissors and stuff. I think that'll be a good width for our crochet hooks. All right, so I added quite a few places for hooks in here. I think that's all I wanna add though, because I think I want there to be room for, well, these scissors are too big. Oh, no, they're not, they fit. Well, that's convenient. For scissors, and I mean, you don't have to use it for crochet hooks, but crochet hooks, you know, yarn needle, that sort of thing. But now we need to do something to have it secure closed. I think for this section, what I wanna do is I wanna create three different ties. So I wanna create a tie that goes at the top corner and the bottom corner, as well as one for the middle. So you could tie it in three places to secure it together. And that way, when it opens, you've got a nice functional crochet hook holder book. And when it's closed, it'll be nice and secure. For this part, I'm going to use this teal yarn. I'm gonna begin at the corner here. I'm gonna start by pulling up a loop right in that corner stitch of the fuchsia yarn. I'm gonna pull up a loop and chain one. Then I'll drop my tail. And then I'm going to start by doing a chain of maybe 30. One, two, three, 28. 29 and 30. Now in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to do a slip stitch. And then I'm gonna slip stitch all the way down the chain until I get back to the work. All right, I've made it back to the work now and the tail is still hanging down here. I'm going to slip stitch. Actually, I'll do a single crochet back to the work. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one single crochet in each of the single crochet stitches until I hit the middle of the fabric here. So I'm going across the short side of the rectangle at this point. And when I hit the middle, let's say right here, when I hit that spot, I'm going to stop with my single crochets. But until then, I'm just going to single crochet one time in each of these stitches. Also, don't worry if it's a little bit wonky at this point, I'm going to block this all when it's finished and that will help stiffen it up and square up the corners. All right, I've made it to that center stitch and now I am going to do a chain of 50. One, two, three, 49 and 50. Now in the second chain from the hook, I'm gonna do a slip stitch and I'm gonna slip stitch down that chain until I get back to the work. All right, and now that I've made it back to the work, I'm going to do one single crochet in the same stitch that we single crocheted in last, and then I'm going to do one single crochet in each stitch all the way up to the corner. And now that I made it to the corner again, I'm going to chain 30. Then I'm gonna slip stitch into the second chain from the hook and slip stitch all the way back down the chain until I reach the work. From there, 
I'm going to single crochet along the bottom of the work all the way until I get back to the next corner. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side of the work. So at both corners, we're gonna be doing that chain 30 and then slip stitching down the chain. And then at the center of the other side, we're gonna do a chain of 50, slip stitching down the chain. I'm gonna zoom through this part because it's the exact same as what we did on the other side. And I will meet you back at the beginning of the round. All right, I've made it around now and this is looking really good. The ties look perfect, exactly how I want them to look. You can see we've got ties on each side. So we've got a tie at the bottom and the top and the middle and these will just tie together to secure our little book closed. But I think I wanna go around this whole thing one more time just to create a more finished edge, just to clean it up a little bit. And I think I'm gonna go around it all with slip stitches. So I'm not gonna single crochet around this time, just slip stitches. And that includes on these little straps that I've made. So I'm gonna start right from where I finished with my last single crochet, and I'm just gonna switch it into a slip stitch. And I'm going to slip stitch up the chain that we've got for the tie here and then I will slip stitch down the chain again and then I'll slip stitch all the way around the entire project. I'm gonna zoom through this part though because it's much of the same and I will see you when I finish with my round of slip stitches. All right, friends, I've just finished crocheting the final little bit and now it's time to weave in our last end and then this project is finished. You're gonna love it. And if you don't, I'm gonna be surprised because it is so cute. Let me just weave in this end and then we can get to the outro. It's finished. Okay, so here is what the outside of the little booklet looks like. You can see the waffle stitch looks awesome. The little ties are super long, good for tying in a bow. And then we've got the corner ties to add extra security. Let's flip this over and get it loaded up, shall we? There's room in here for a pair of scissors. We've got lots of room for crochet hooks. And if you've got crochet hooks that are a little bit tall, this little blue flap will keep them secured while they are wandering around with you. And I like to keep a pen with me too. Let's pack up my measuring tape as well. And there we go. What about my yarn needle? Where did you go? There you are. Also need to have a yarn needle with us. So there we go. Now we can fold it over like a little book. And then you've got a couple of options. So my thought is that I would just do some knots for the corners, nothing too fancy, just enough for a knot. I mean, there's enough here for a bow if you want to tie a bow. But then you've got two options for the ties. One, you could tie it around all the way around and secure that with a knot like this, or you could just secure it on the front with a bow. Look at how cute this is. Oh my gosh, what a fun little project. I love the waffle stitch. I think adding that row around the outside of the slip stitches created a really nice finish. Another thing you can do if you want to make this take up a little bit less space is you can have all your items inside and then you can roll it up. So you can put the items inside, put the first tie inside as well, and then you can just roll it all the way around like this and then secure like so. And then you've still got these two different ties here, which you can still tie together for that extra security on the top and bottom. And this would be great if it's gonna go into like some luggage as a travel pack. But this is super cute rolled up like this. I think I like it as a book personally. I just think it's super cute folded over like a little book. There we go. Oh, but I just love it. What do you think? Oh God, I love the waffle stitch. Don't you think the waffle stitch is just so cute? And by putting in these seams, the hooks are nice and secure upright. There's a larger pocket for you to add some other things, whatever you wanna add into there. There's a little bit more room on this side. I made it big enough for a pair of scissors on the other side. I think the ties are perfect. I think they're the perfect length. The chain of 50 made a perfect length for this one. And I think this is going to actually be a new common use item for me because I bring my crochet work with me all over the place and having a little pack to bring it in 
is just perfect. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're gonna try and make this crochet hook holder, let me know. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I really enjoyed making it. And by the way, thank you so much to everyone who is supporting the channel. Here's everyone supporting the channel right now. If you're interested in showing your support, check out the links in the description down below. I'll also include all of the relevant tutorials down there for you as well. Again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!